Hey, and welcome to Central Line High School for tonight's Class 2A Regional Semifinal Match or Game between the Boyden Hall Comets and your Central Lion Lions. I'm Jeff Cruz. I will be joined shortly by Jason Engelman, who will be doing our play-by-play -play tonight as we uh, get set here uh, for a Siouxland Conference uh, rematch. Third time around for these two teams to see each other this year. We'll start here by taking a look at some of the stats for both of these teams. Boynton Hall comes into tonight's contest with a 12 and 10 overall record. They were nine and nine in the Siouxland Conference. Central Lion is 20 and two overall, and they finished the Siouxland Conference season with a 16 and two record. Boynton Hall averages 49.2 points per game. They shoot 40% from the field. They average 26.6 rebounds, 11.9 assists, 10 point, or sorry, yeah, 10.6 steals. They also shoot 59% from the free throw line, and they average 17.6 turnovers. The Lions, are the, are the, on the other hand, average 63.9 points per game. They shoot 47% from the field, average 31.3 rebounds per game, 16.3 assists, 13.3 steals per game. Lions also shoot 64% from the free throw line, and they average 10 and a half turnovers per game. So the Lions hold a slight advantage in basically every category. Uh, Lions and Comets have seen each other obviously twice through the Sioux land. Um, it were actually one of the, I think it was the third meeting of the year, so they haven't seen each other since uh, over a month. Uh, as the, uh, the way the schedule worked out this year. But uh, Coach Grafing and I sat down today to talk a little bit about the game, the quarterfinal game um, versus Western Christian on last this past Tuesday, and then tonight's matchup. We'll have that interview now. Welcome back to the pregame show. We're being joined now by Central Line Girls Head Coach Heather Grafing. Coach, thanks for joining me. Hey, it's good to be here. Well, Coach, uh, let's go back to the quarterfinal game um, from this uh, earlier this week. Uh, get the win over Western Christian, uh, about a 20-some 20, 20 point win. Um, how did the girls play during that game? You know what? That's a, it was a really good first night out. There always seems like there's some jitters that first game, and, and Western had had the opportunity to play the Saturday before. Mm -hmm. So I think you could tell in that first quarter, you could kind of tell to them they had one game under them already for, for postseason and took us a little bit to get going. But uh, I thought the girls did a fantastic job. Western, you know, I think we talked about it with the pregame uh, then too, but their record is really deceiving because they play such a tough schedule, mm -hmm. and they've played really good teams, really tough. And so I thought the girls, you know, approached that game really well they came ready to play they understood that records right now don't mean anything everybody's undefeated yep. and and so um I thought the girls did a great job just coming out and ready to play yeah uh you know western um we talked about it Mr. Engel and I during during the broadcast how it, we just kind of weathered the storm early in the game mm -hmm. and, and just kept ma maintained and didn't panic or anything and then eventually built up a lead and then coming out of halftime western came out with kind of that same renewed energy a mm -hmm. little bit of a run but we were able again come back right. basically even I think they were on like almost like a seven to one run at one point to start the quarter the and then they went, then it was seven to seven again for mm -hmm. the quarter so we just a good job of the yeah. girls to maintain their composure not panic and not let those little kind of runs uh, develop into big runs no and you got to remember we've seen this all year you know teams before they step on the floor against us in their locker room they're getting they're getting you know amped up uh, just with our ranking and thing yep. like things like that and so you, you know that's not uncommon for us to to come out and, and see teams just really come at us and, and you know take a swing at us um, and you know we always try to make sure we're, we want to be the aggressors and sometimes you know the other team comes out with more energy but you're right the girls don't panic I think of games in the last you know couple of weeks where teams came out on a 6-0 run on us. Obviously, that's not something we want. Right. But, uh, you know, the composure the girls show of, okay, we got to get this together. They don't panic. They just get to work. Um, and that's just that just comes with maturity and experience. So really proud of how they handled that. Like I said, Western uh, is a very, very good team. Uh, but especially they had seniors. They had a lot of seniors. They had yeah, a lot of kids. A lot, yeah. yeah, and, and they're not they're – not, uh, um, you know, new to big games, even though it may not be in basketball and volleyball, you know, obviously Western's really competitive. And so those seniors had played in big games. And, and so to come out and play the way we did, I was really proud of them. 
and uh, a good shooting night for the Lions. Yeah. Uh, we were just talking six different girls yeah. make a three pointer. That's uh, I don't know if I have records of any of that, <laughs> but I tell you what, that was you know. But the, again, that just uh, that just goes back to back to the kids. Um, you know, Afton, if you look on our stats and you don't watch us play, you're gonna say, well, she's maybe not uh, you know an outside threat. She hit two of them for us, yep. and and we know in practice she does it all the time. Um, you know, Dusta. I think the student section was even Western student section was encouraging to shoot at the top of the key. And I laughed because uh, Reagan and I were talking about it. And Reagan said, when we heard Western's uh, student section saying, shoot it, we all said, shoot it, shoot it. <laughs> they were saying the same thing because uh, Desta could shoot from the outside. So that was kind of fun to see her hit one. Um, you know, Ashlyn Davis came out at yep. the end of the game. She hit one, and uh, unfortunately, Ari Newcastle is battling some back problems. Yeah. But, you know, if she'd gotten on the floor, I think she'd hit one, too. Probably. So, probably. Uh, yeah, so it was just a really fun night. And like I said, I, I just appreciate the girls' efforts. Um, and they just, you know, they put four quarters together. Well, uh, moving on, uh, we are in now the semifinal round tonight here in Rock Rapids. Uh, another uh, familiar opponent mm -hmm. uh, back to the Siouxland Conference here. Boyden Hall coming in. Um, we Obviously, this is the third time around seeing them, uh, Central Lying able to get the first uh, uh, two victories uh, this season. Um, what are we expecting from Boyden Hall? Uh, maybe a little bit different than we've seen uh, in the first two matchups. Yeah, they are a much improved team. Uh, you know, when you go back and look, and I don't know if this is exact, but if I remember correctly, their last – uh, they've won seven out of their last eight games. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so, you know, this is a team that's improved. They're very well coached. Um, and they're a group of kids, again, that have played in big games. Um, you know, may not be in basketball, but in volleyball and so on, they've been on the big stage. And and so, you know, the, it's, you know, one thing we've preached uh, since we beating Western is we can't approach it like it's just Boyden Hall. Like, it's to, you right. know, it really has felt like in practice it feels like we're going to go up against a team we haven't played yet just by the way the girls have approached this. Um, so, yeah, they're, they, they've got that inside presence. They've got uh, kids on the outside that have really stepped up for them since the beginning of the season, um, and they step up and do some scoring for them. And so this is going to be a huge challenge. Um, but, you know, we're playing better too, and, and the girls know we're going to just go out and take it one quarter at a time. Yeah, and a very, you know, talk about experience, a very another experienced team. They're going to start at least three seniors. Mm -hmm. uh, their top two scorers are seniors. Um, the Potomom girl, uh, it seems like she's been there for about eight <laughs> years. Um, yeah. uh, but, uh, you know, so they'll, they'll, uh, they bring that to the court as well, mm -hmm. which uh, obviously, especially in the postseason, um, experience is, is, is accounts for a little bit more now than it does probably mm -hmm. in the regular season. Yeah, and, you know, you also have to remember, too, we, you know, we have played each other twice. They know everything about us. We right. know everything about them. And, and so tonight's really going to be about executing those little fundamental things, you know, getting the rebounds uh, defensively, putting together some stops. It's really going to just come down to those little things, and that's really what we've been preaching. And, and you know, the girls, the girls are ready. Yeah, not just two times this year, two times every year. So, some, yeah. you know, you know, like right. Reggie Van Wy and, and, you know, and uh, uh, Kaylee Davis and some mm -hmm. of the other seniors have seen Potabom and, and Bombgars and some of those other girls twice yeah. a year <laughs> for the last four years, plus junior high playing. Yeah, absolutely. So it, it, they know each other well. Know each other very well. And sometimes sometimes it's good in the postseason to have those times. Sometimes right. it's also fresh or uh, refreshing when you have someone that is the first time you've mm -hmm. seen them. Um, hopefully for tonight it's a good thing to see. Yeah, you know, there's see advantages to both. You know, we hadn't played Western all, at all this year, and, you know, there have been advantages on both sides if we'd seen each other, sure. But honestly, it's really going to come down to fundamentals. Yeah. And, and so, you know, it's hard to beat a team that, uh, you know, plays tough defense and rebounds the ball well. And, and so that's what we're going to come out, and we're just going to try to play fundamental basketball tonight. All right, well, uh, hopefully that uh, fundamental basketball uh, equates to a win tonight. So we wish you good luck. And thank you. Thank you for taking some time to join us today. And we'll be back with more of the pregame show after these words from our sponsors. Here's to welcoming moments, big and small. At Avera, our nationally recognized health system will be right here with you, with care and coverage. Partner with Avera for more hellos, more hugs, more memories. We'll move you forward through sickness, and health, and every milestone in between. Hello possibility, hello healthy, hello life. Avera, moving health forward. At Frontier Bank, we know you're busy with what really matters. That's why our Big Deal Checking account was created to make banking work for you. While you're keeping up with life's daily transactions, your Big Deal Checking account is earning you monthly rewards. Competitive rates? refunds on ATM fees, and more, with no minimum balance or monthly service fees required. And you can apply for a Big Deal account from anywhere in less than 10 minutes. Focus on what matters most. Bank with Frontier Bank, 
See a customer service representative for more information. Member FDIC. Hey, and welcome back to Central Lion High School. Four and a half minutes here before tip-off. I want to thank Coach Grafing for taking some time out of her day today. No school today here at Central Lion, a professional development day, so Coach Grafing and I sat down when she was free. Talk a little bit about the, the win versus Western Christian and uh, obviously then tonight's matchup. Let's take a look at the last five games for both of these teams. As Coach Grafing said, Boyd Hall on quite a little streak here. They've won four out of their last five. And I believe Coach Grafing said seven out of their last eight as well. They won at Hinton, 63 to 45. They won at MOC Floyd Valley, 48 to 32. They had a win at home versus Okaboji. That was a 59 to 35 score. They won at Sheldon, 49 to 34. And their lone loss in the last five games came at home versus Sioux Center, and that was a 57 to 32 game. The Lions are also four and one in their last five games. They had a win at home versus Western Christian, 67 to 44. A win at home versus George Little Rock, 74 to 23. A loss at home to West Lions, 60 to 39. A win at Siblio Cheaton, 54 to 37. And a win at MOC Floyd Valley, 57 to 42. Taking a look a little bit here at the brackets. Both Central Lion and Boyden Hall had a bye for the first round of regional play. And then last past Tuesday, they played, both squads played. Central Lion with that 67 to 44 victory at home versus Western Christian. Boyden Hall on the road with a win 63 to 43 over Hinton. The other teams left here in this region on the other side of the bracket, the number two seed, Ridgeview, and the number three seed, West Monona. They are playing tonight as well. The winner of tonight's matchup and the winner of Ridgeview and West Monona, they will play next Wednesday. I do believe that we are notified that that game will be played at Kingsley Pearson. We'll see if that is going to hold up. It's a, kind of a small gym I have a regional final at, but uh, we'll see if the state decides to keep it there, if they move it. But that's how, what is left here in Class 2A Region 1. Series history, Central Lion has won six of the last ten games, including the two games this season. They won the first game 72-58, to and the second game 55 244. Looking at the final Siouxland Conference standings, see that Central Lion finished in second place with a 16-2 record. Boyden Hall with that 9-9 record were fifth. West Lion were, are the 2021-2022 Siouxland Conference champions for girls. So congratulations to the Wildcats. Looking at some of the rankings, the last uh, rankings that came out from the Iowa Girls Athletic Association. Central Lion was ranked third in Class 2A. Sibley Cheaton was ranked fifth. Sibley Cheaton is still alive in Region 2 as they are playing as well tonight. And West Lion is ranked number two in Class 3A. They are already in the regional finals as Class 3A and I believe maybe 4A have already played their semifinal. And uh, they are West Lion advance to their region final, regional final. Taking a look at tonight's key players of the game. First for Boyden Hall, we are going with the senior, Marissa Potabom, number 33. She averages 13 points per game. She shoots 49% from the field, averages 7.6 rebounds, 1.6 assists, and 1.6 steals. Potterbaum is the team leader in scoring and rebounds for the Comets. Key player of the game for Central Lion, going to be the girl that's going to guard her, Desta Hugadorn, the sophomore. Hugadorn averages 11.2 points per game, shoots 59% from the field, averages 6.4 rebounds, 1.6 assists, and 1.6 steals. Hugadorn is the leader on the team in rebounds, and she is second overall in scoring for the Lions. To head coaches tonight, Boyn Hall, their head coach is Nathan Alexander, and the Lions head coach is Heather Grafing.
We are getting started here. Let's go with the starting lineups. First for Boyden Hall. They're gonna go like this. Number 11, senior Kylie Baumgars. Number 15, a senior Ellie Wolber. Number 21, senior Jewel Bergstrom. Number 25, junior Avery Noble. And our key player of the game, number 33, senior Marissa Potabaum. Now for the Lions. Their starting lineup looks like this. Number two, a junior, Afton Schlumbum. Number 10, junior, Addison Klosterbor. Number 20, senior, Regan Van Wy. Number 24, senior, Kaylee Davis. And number 40, the CL key player of the game, sophomore, Desta Hugadorn. We are going to step away here for a second as we get set for our national anthem. You are watching Lions Basketball here on the CL Broadcast Network. After a long day, deciding on dinner can be tough, but a few simple words can make everything better. Pizza's here. End your day the right way with pizza and chicken from the carryout and delivery experts at your local pizza ranch. Mm -hmm. changes you change with it by embracing new rhythms redefining connection and taking less for granted you push through the uncertainty and at every point along the way we stand with you because even when your world looks different our commitment to your care stays the same sanford health health lives here Denoble Austin and Company PC Certified Public Accountants offers a variety of services including payroll, auditing, sales tax, financial statement preparation, and of course, income taxes. Whether you're a farmer, small or large business owner, or just require some assistance with your personal finances, Denoble Austin and Company PC can save you time and peace of mind with the skills you need and the service you expect. Located in Rock Rapids and Laverne. And we're back here in Rock Rapids. Want to thank, I believe that was uh, senior Anna, no. Junior Anna Warnchies. Junior Anna Warnchies. I never know which, when they say Anna, I never yeah. know which Anna it is. So they're both cheerleaders and they both sing the national anthem. But very good rendition by Anna Warnchies. So congratulations, or thank you to her. That was the voice of Mr. Jason Engelman, our ace play-by-play. -play. Ace announcer tonight, each and every night here. And right, we are we set. Well, almost ready. Here we go. The tip is up and controlled by the Lions. Lions out there again, as we said, starting lineup, Schlumbum, Hugadorn, Klosterbor, Davis, and Van Wy. Klosterbor from three. That's good early on. Good start for Addison Klosterbor. She had the game high, I believe, 18 points on Tuesday. So good to see her off to a good start. Noble, top of the key, ball stolen by Van Wy. Fast break, tipped out of bounds by number 15, Wobler. Good Lions hustle. will retain possession. Very good hustle there by Wobler to not give up that easy bucket for Van Wy. Lions on offense, taking the ball under their own basket. Van Wy has it. He's going to dribble to the top of the key. Davis over to Schlumbum. Good defense being played here by the Lady Comets. Van Wy a little long on that layup attempt. Potabom will run the floor. Pass just out of reach 
of Ellie Wobler, and that'll sail out of bounds. Turnover, Boynton Hall. Good crowd on hand here in Rock Rapids for the second. Is it second? Are we in third round, girls? Uh, technically the third round. Technically the third because round. Because there were a few of the uh, few teams had a little bo or play in game, I guess if you want to call it, pigtail games. Ball tipped around and last touch by Dessa Hogadorn out of bounds off the Lions. Comets will have the possession. Lions are going to put on a full court press here. Trying to put some pressure on the Comet ball handlers. Bring the ball up is Kyler Baumgars, the senior. Wobler. That's Bergstrom. Down low to Potabom. Just off the rim. And good hustle, but out of bounds off the Comets. Yeah, one thing that uh, Coach Grief and I, we didn't talk about it in the interview, we talked about it afterwards, but uh, they, she said they watched film, and the second time around, Potabon had like 22-ish points, and they played behind her all night. So tonight they're going to try and front her and see if they can uh, cause her the, the entry pass to be a little bit tougher. Wow. Nice uh, nice screen there by Desta Hogadorn. I don't know if she intentionally or unintentionally did that, but she <laughs> cleared cleared a nice path for Reagan Van Wyatt. She curled off of Desta and had a nice layup. We got a double dribble here on Noble turnover Comets. So a 5-0 lead here early on for the Lions. In central line, no school today. Teacher professional development, so these students should be well rested. Hopefully not too rested for central line. Yeah, you know, Coach Grafing had them come in this morning about 10 and do a little shoot around so that they weren't uh, sleeping until noon. Hugadorn, no good. Tipped out by Potabom. Lions basketball under their own basket. Like the aggressiveness there by Desta yep, Hugadorn. Yep. Go right at Potabom. She is the leading scorer and leading rebounder for the Comets. So. Pass into Van Wy over to Klosterbor. Addison with a step back. Jumper just off the mark. Rebound Noble. Marissa Potabom. Gets it across the half court line. Noble finds a backdoor Baumgars. And Potabon, the recipient of a good pass down low, connects on the two. Kaylee Davis. Whoa. Desta Hogadorn with a long pass. Just out of the reach of Klostevor into the fourth Just row a bit of the outside. bleachers. Just a bit outside. Just right? a bit outside. All right, five to two, three-point lead for the Lions. Noble top the key. Pass down low, tipped around. Comets will work it around the perimeter, trying to set their offense. Another good backdoor by Baumgars. And thankfully for the Lions, there was a foul call because yeah. there's another easy basket opportunity for Potabom. Yeah, the help defense there coming and leaving Potabom. Lions might want to think about just yep. Living and dying with somebody else. Marissa Potomac was not going to miss very many of them around the basket, especially if she gets wide open shots. So, yeah. And that's layup attempt, no good. Kaylee Davis, good check out, gets the rebound. Klostabor for three, in and out. Good rebound by Van Wy, who puts it back up and in. Like Van Wy doing what she does best, getting yep. that rebound, putting it right back up. She's the second leading rebounder for the Lions. One thing the Lions got to be careful here on defense is not overplaying. As number 15, Ellie Wobler connects on the left-handed layup. Schlumbum dribbles in. Brooklyn Kroll has checked into the game for the Lions. Desta Hogadorn is now on the bench. The lefty with the left-handed scoop shot knocks it down. Basket good, says the official. See the replay here. Good use of the left hand. Potabom doesn't keep that her arm straight vertical there. So that is on Marissa Potabom. Her first, just the team first. Klosterboro will take a seat. As Hugadorn checks back in, we also had a sub for the comments. See if I can get the number of that individual. Looks Might like be number 23. 23. Looks like 23. That's Ashton Kelderman. 
Pottebaum to Noble. Noble all the way to the basket, left-handed layup, so a miscommunication by the Lions on defense leads to an easy basket. And uh, inadvertent bump there, I think, is going to go against Baumgars for the Yeah, I'm, I'm sure that's not foul. They, what uh, Coach Alexander wanted. Klosterbohr quickly back in, giving Davis a breather. Now looks like maybe a 2-3 zone out of Boyden Hall. I expect Boyden Hall to mix it up tonight on defense, not giving the Lions multiple looks at the same defense. Klosterbohr again for three. No good. Baumgars, ball tipped around, stolen by Klosborg. Good look ahead, but just out of the reach of Afton Slumbaum out of bounds. You know, both Coach coaches telling him to slow it down. I see both of them just slow it down a little bit. Yeah, I think uh, Coach Alexander is going to be uh, stressing to slow it down. Yeah. As Coach Grafing, she's going to be okay with that throwaway because the Lions love to go up and down. And we got a steal and then a foul on the floor as Avery Noble. Can call for the blocking foul on the floor. Ball out of bounds to the Lions. <laughs> the official, the official gave the ball to Addison Klosterbord, and one of the officials was standing right in the middle of everything. So <laughs> they got to slow that. They're going to slow themselves down. Ball blocked by Kelderman. Comet basketball. Bomb guard to Noble. Lions doing a lot of switching. Wolbler to Kelderman. You can see they're trying to get into Potabon with no success as Kelderman shoots the three, tipped around, rebound, Klosterbor. Good pass ahead, Schlumbum to Van Wy. She'll dribble along the baseline. Ooh. Hugadorn for two, rattles home. Desta Hugadorn stepping out a little bit there. Desta hit one of those the other night, and that yes, really, did. that really not only propelled her confidence, but the team's confidence. And there's a basket and a foul. Foul's going to go against Reagan Van Wy, and the basket goes to number 15, Ellie Wobler. She'll get a chance for the three-point play at the line. Yeah, Lions got to think about maybe Desta Hugenorn does not need to guard Marissa Potabaum 30 feet away from the yeah. basket. Just back off. She's going to bring the ball up the court. That's fine. Maybe put a guard on her to guard her until she gets down, brings the ball in, and then switch back off. Missed free throw there by Wolver. Rebound by Hugenorn. Ball passed up ahead to Schlumbum. Right-handed layup. No foul call. I thought maybe we saw some. Some arms getting smacked around. There's Hugadorn working hard on the offensive glass and connects. Good aggressive play by number 40. Boy, Desta has come out and just really asserted herself. That was a great rebound. Just snug it out or grabbed it with one hand, her left hand, too. You can tell a little bit that Marissa Padovan knows she already has one foul. Isn't mm -hmm. ready to pick up her second early on here in this, in this ball game. Padovan for two, no good. Short, here comes Davis on the rebound. Again, Lions want to push on every opportunity. Slumbum with a couple shot fakes, down low to Hogadorn. Oh, I don't know how that pass made it, but it did. But that one wasn't, as it's stolen from Kroll. Comet's trying to get it across the half line and do. We're going to have a hold here. That's two now on after Schlumbum. Two on Schlumbum. Third team foul. She'll take a seat. Ashlyn Yakel, number 42, seeing her first action. Reagan Van Wy is also checked in. It's Baumgars, top of the key. Trying to get the ball into Potabom, has it stolen. Davis trying to go all the way to the basket. Two pointers up and good, good. Good attack on the rim for Davis. Yeah, good job there by Mighty Mouse, as they call her. Shortest kid on the team, basically. Getting a layup among, amongst the uh, taller girls.
Bergstrom, no good, foul. It's gonna go against number 10, Klosterbor, her first, team fourth. Same thing that they called Podmon arm on, not keeping that hand vertical. If you keep it straight up and down, it kind of makes it harder on the official. As soon as you go at the, the girl, at her head basically, you're gonna get a foul called about 90% of the time. Both free throw attempts by Bergstrom off the mark. Van Wy, good ball movement. Kroll, Kroll makes the shot, but they're gonna call a foul here on the floor. So no good on the basket, 14 Let's foul. Kind of interesting, that, that was a real ticky-tack foul down here. Earlier in the last possession, the Lions were all over the girl down here and then nothing called. Yeah. Cross the board for three, that's gonna be no good. Rebound, Kroll. Tipped around, loose, and tipped around again. And it's off white, Comet basketball. There are 32 seconds left here in this first quarter. Been a fast quarter. Lions in control, 16 to eight. See if the Comets here will hold for the last shot. Baumgars to Wobler. All tipped around. Kelderman on the drive. Jump shot, no good. Rebound. And taken away by the Lions. Long look ahead, but tipped out of bounds. I think she got confused by the... Uh, the crowd, maybe? The crowd. Crowd's been counting it down since 20. That one's was incorrectly. Tipped. So the line's gonna break. Van Wy, as time expires, just off the rim, no good. That leaves us here at 16 to eight, an eight point lead for Central Line Lions. Here's to welcoming moments, big and small. At Avera, our nationally recognized health system will be right here with you, with care and coverage. Partner with Avera for more hellos, more hugs, more memories. We'll move you forward through sickness and health and every milestone in between. Hello possibility, hello healthy, hello life. Avera, moving health forward. Is that here we go. And back here in Rock Rapids as we get set for the start of the second quarter. Make sure we thank our sponsors, Avera Medical Group, Frontier Bank, Pizza Ranch, Premier Bank, Sanford Health, the Noble Austin Company PC, and the Pepsi Beverage Company. Comets will start this quarter with the ball. Out there with Riley Kelly, stolen by Van Wise. so we'll get to who's out on the floor here in just a second. Klosterbor from deep. Off the mark, rebound Yakel. Ball passed around. Wide open, Davis for three, no good. Ball tipped around, Riley Kelderman will come away with it. She's immediately trapped and throws it smartly off the leg yeah, of that Hogadorn. Was very that was very smart play there the by Kelderman. That's the only option she had. I got a little nervous when three Lions ran after her. I thought, uh-oh, they're gonna get a layup, but they did a good job of stopping it. Potabom trying to get the ball in, does so to Noble. I think I'm allowed to do this, but if you are watching from home, either whether you're a Boyden Hall Comet fan or a Central Line Lion fan, let us know that you're watching by putting a message there in the chat box on YouTube, or if you're fortunate enough to have Mr. Cruiser I's cell phone number, you can always text us. Throw a compliment in there, that's always nice. Foul there on the Comets as Davis goes all the way to the basket. Can't connect, but she'll go to the free throw line for two. That's gonna be on number 25. That's Avery Noble, her second, team fifth. Davis from the line this year, shooting at 68%. First one is good. D 
Dion Jansma in for Yakel on the Lions side. And we got number 21 back in, Bergstrom, as well as number 11, Kyler Baumgars in for the Comets. Tonight our broadcast is being brought to you by a couple other helpers up here besides Mr. Cruz and myself. We got Leo Grohn, Liam Vanderzee, Adrian Bonchi, as well as Jason Heiser, and one of the males, I think that's CJ. Or is it Bo? Bo. Bo, dang it. I can't believe I goofed that. That's Bo. Thanks to those guys for helping us out tonight. It's 18 to 10, Lions up by eight yet. Good dribble drive by Van Wy. Long jumper by Hugadorn off the mark. Jansma reverse layup. Deion Jansma. Connects. Nifty little move under the basket. Noble. Yep, we're going to have a foul there on Klossevor, who got. That's her second foul now. Hard to fault the aggressiveness, but well away from the basket. No attempt being made there to, for an offensive attack by any means. So Schlumbum and Klosterberg, both the two fouls on the bench now. Lots of time left here in the second quarter. Yep. Baumgars to Noble. Three, point, it, three pointers up and no good, out of bounds. Lions basketball. Lots of people giving shout outs and are want, giving us some, letting us know they're watching via YouTube chat. Stolen by Bergstrom, left hand layup is good. Lions got to be a little more careful with the basketball as the Comets are applying a full, some full court pressure. Jansma to Hugadorn. And we're going to have a foul here in the backcourt before the uh, for the run out, there's going to be a foul. Let's see who they call this on. 22, Dion Jansma. Not a bad foul necessarily. 16 foul on the Lions. YouTube chat, we got Audrey Weiler watching from Florida. Tara Lyle watching from home. Kerry Borman, Gordy Faber, Yvette Wagmeister, Levi Cooperschmidt, Linda Sylvie. Thank you guys for watching, letting us know. Bergstrom down low to Potabomb. Two-pointer up and good. Davis over to Kroll to Jansma. There's Davis again to Van Wy. Lions in a little bit of a hurry. I don't know what, for what reason, but out of bounds. Another turnover. Yeah, the Lions, they broke the press easily that time. And that's the, that's the problem you have with the press. Sometimes it hurries you up into your offense, especially now the Lions uh, without Afton Schlumbaum out there to run the point. Addison Klossmore usually runs it when she's not in the game. So it's it, the Lions have got to get somebody to take control. Now they've got three seniors out, four seniors out there at the moment with Davis check, or uh, Yako checking in. So look for the Lions. One of those seniors to step up, just get everyone calmed down, get the ball across, Get a good offense set. Try to get Hugadorn down on the block a little bit against Potabom. You know, lines don't have, without uh, Klostowar in there, they don't have a, a real, you know, deep three-point uh, threat. Hopefully maybe Davis can knock one down. But uh, the Lions here with that 10, they were up by 10, now giving up four straight points here to the Comets. They got to get a get a stop here on defense, and then get uh, get it turned around back on offense. Great insight there from Mr. Cruz as the comments come out of the timeout with the basketball on a four to nothing run here. Good steal by Ashlyn Yankel, who just was inserted into this ball game. Another steal by the comments as Marissa Potabom anticipates the pass, two pointer off the mark, no good, but rebounded by Wobbler, but can't connect. And here comes Van Wy. Davis to Yakel. Another errant pass, tipped out of bounds by Ashton Kelderman. Ariana Nooncaster, number 32, the senior, will check in for the first time. Ari, a three-point specialist. Yep. Having some dealing with some some back issues and a little injury, so hopefully she's got that all worked out and help the Lions out here. 
Another errant pass out of bounds off the fingertips of the Lions. The Lions just need to calm themselves down a little bit and understand that they're, they're actually winning this ball game. <laughs> not that you shouldn't have a sense of urgency on offense, but just a collective sense of Yeah, they're not, there's not a whole lot of ball pressure no. or anything. It's just... Baumgars to Riley Kelderman. Long three, no good. Tipped around, rebound, Kroll. Kroll on the attack. Close pass to Van Wy. Three-pointer by Davis is up, off the mark. Rebound, Baumgars. Kelderman up to Kelderman. Potabom now has it. Ashton Kellerman, top of the key, over to Baumgars. See, now the Comets are doing a good job. They're not forcing anything. They're not hurrying up. Three-pointer well short by Baumgars, tipped around and out of bounds off the Comets. Still didn't make that shot, but it was a wide open three-pointer. Just being nice and patient is Boyden Hall. Another shout-out from text message from Mr. Van Berkham, Terry Van Berkham watching. Addison Klostebor back in with two fouls. She'll have to play, play a little cautiously. Ashton Kelderman over to Riley Kelderman. Three pointers up off the mark. Rebound Klostebor. Up ahead to Davis. Klosterbor for three and hits the support. It's two games in a row we've had the support yeah, that's hit. Yeah, that happened last that night in the, in the, in the boys year. game. Now Addison will come out, kind of an offensive defensive substitution here early on. 21 Bergstrom will check in for the comments. Yeah, kind of a standstill here as I don't think either team is, Central Line has not scored in three and a half minutes and it's been about two minutes at least since Boyne Hall has scored, so. Offensive drought we've got going on here. Wobler working on Kroll. Kelderman from the free throw line, no good. Potabom to Wobler. And that's going to rattle home. Another basket for the Comets. And they're going to get a timeout. Looks like we're going to have a 30-second here, Mr. Cruz. We'll stay here. Now, this is the last uh, event we'll have on the CL Broadcast Network for the winter season as the boys and girls, the boy, uh, obviously the boys will play, are one last night, and so they play on Tuesday at MOC Floyd Valley. The girls, no matter what happens tonight, this will be the last game that we see the girls here in Central Lion. But we will be back early March, March 8th. We'll be back on the air with our 5th through 12th grade parade of bands, and uh, that will be a 7 o'clock start, and you can... We've got a whole bunch of uh, events, fine arts events here in the month of March. So you can look forward to those on the CL Broadcast Network. A few more shout outs here. Marissa Metzger watching from Oklahoma. Mason Herbert watching from home. Larry DeBoer watching from Orange City. Matt Odekoven watching from Omaha. More, Megan Alexander, that's Coach Alexander's uh, wife, I'm assuming, saying that her kids are watching from home. Hey, and Bruce Eckenrod, long term, long time. CL girls coach and CL teacher watching. Van Wy from the elbow. Finds Noonkester in the corner. Three-pointer by Noonkester. Up and good. Big basket there. Desperately needed by the Lions. And that's what Noonkester can provide off the bench is that kind of that three-point marksmanship. And there we go. That good offense leads to good defense in this case. Klostebor. Over to Davis, and stolen again. Again, maybe not the pass we needed to make there. Ashton Kelderman can't connect on the layup attempt. Here comes the Lions again. Davis to Van Wy. Van Wy hit on the arm. She's going to go to the line for a pair. Reagan's worked very hard on her free throws this year. Shot the ball much better from the line this last time out. 66% on the year. First one is good. I got a few shout-outs that have been 
sent my direction. I know Mr. Schwartz, Mark Schwartz, one of the best subs in the business, is, is watching bet. from home. So he's watching. The Docker family's watching. You said Mr. Van Berkham and company are watching. Jason Stubbe. Oh. The infamous Jason Stubbe's watching. Probably taking notes. He's the voice of the Lions when it comes to football season. He does the announcing. He also does some coaching for GLR basketball. Wobler. Oh, very good job very there good by footwork. Wobler. Very good footwork. Because Van Wy kind of flashed in front of her, and Wobler didn't, lost her footing, but didn't matter. Van Wy to Yakel. Here's Davis going baseline, two-pointer up and good, and blocking foul, so we got an and one situation. See the replay here. Good job there by Davis, and you see in the replay, number 23, Ashton Kelderman way underneath the basket, which is why that was a blocking <laughs> foul. Davis connects for the three-point play. Bergstrom will bring it up. Kelderman connects on another layup. The score is 27-20, seven-point lead here for your Lions. 40 seconds and counting left in the half. Three-pointer by Jansma. Hits the bottom of the net. Deion Jansma, back-to-back -back games with a three-pointer. She has five tonight, well above her season average. That's what it's going to take when you have a few Lions in foul trouble. A few Definitely. other members of the team need to step up, and they have thus far. Potabom off the backboard, no good. We're going to have a tie-up. And Arrow in favor of Central Lion. Klossabor making the offensive substitution here for Yakel. I was just thinking if they're going to try and get Aston Klossabor back in the game here for an offensive possession, thought maybe you'd see Afton and Addison. We're under 10 here. Look for Addison just to take one-on-one -on -one here. Yep. Long three-pointer by Klossabor off the mark. What well, Lions, though, weathered that storm. They had cut it, Boyne Hall had cut it to a six point lead. Lions extend it back. Now a 10 point lead. That was a 14 to 12 quarter in favor of the Lions. So Lions with a 10 point lead as we go to halftime. I will have an interview with our FFA advisor, Mr. Josh Rockhill, for a part of our halftime show. And then we'll have some highlights put together by Jason and Bo. You're watching Lions Basketball here on the CL Broadcast Network. At Frontier Bank, we know you're busy with what really matters. That's why our Big Deal Checking account was created to make banking work for you. While you're keeping up with life's daily transactions, your Big Deal Checking account is earning you monthly rewards. Competitive rates, refunds on ATM fees, and more, with no minimum balance or monthly service fees required. And you can apply for a Big Deal account from anywhere in less than 10 minutes. Focus on what matters most. Bank with Frontier Bank. See a customer service representative for more information. Member FDIC. <laughs> After a long day, deciding on dinner can be tough, but a few simple words can make everything better. Pizza's here. End your day the right way with pizza and chicken from the carryout and delivery experts at your local pizza ranch. Mm -hmm. Welcome to the Halftime Show. I'm being joined now by Central Lion FFA advisor, Josh Rockhill. Mr. Rockhill, thanks for joining me. Yeah, thanks for having me, Jeff. All right, so uh, Mr. Rockhill, next week we will be having National FFA Week. Yes. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what that is and um, what uh, some of the things that happen here at Central Line. Sure, yeah. Uh, National FFA Week is something held uh, through the 
nationally throughout the entire organization where, uh, you know, various chapters throughout the country, you know, celebrate different, different, or def, uh, excuse me, different things about, um, you know, promotion of agriculture and community service and just trying to uh, get the organization out to the public and showing, you know, this is who we are. Um, different things that we do um, is business appreciation cookies. Uh, we deliver cookies throughout the community and supporters and businesses and people that uh, have just generally just uh, showing support for our organization throughout the year. Um, one thing that we also do is we grill hamburgers for the middle school and high school um, and just, uh, uh, you know, basically feed our kids and say, hey, you know, we're the FFA and this is what we're doing. And I think that that's just a long time tradition um, since I was in high school and even before that, I think that that's just something that we've always done for the school. Um, and then we also have dress up days and just, uh, celebrate some different things. And, um, you know, one of the big things I know a lot of the kids look forward to is tractor day on, on, on Friday. Yep, yep. Um, and also the Olympics that we hold, um, at the end of the day on Friday next week. And, uh, it's, uh, almost always the bound to be either really cold or snow <laughs> on tractor, bring your, tra your tractor sure. to school day. Yes, for sure. You yeah. think that, uh, FFA, maybe they invite the, uh, national council would move it back in the year a little bit since right. most of the, most of the, uh, you know, the bigger FFA organizations are probably in the uh, colder areas, For but sure. uh, no, that's uh, the kids always like it. Park them out in the parking lot towards the uh, back of the parking lot, and uh, um, you get some get some unique ones. Yes, get the regular <laughs> ones. You get some some big ones, some small ones, some yep. brand new ones, some really really old ones. Yep, some and without <laughs> cabs, which is why it gets a little <laughs> yeah. cold. <laughs> yeah, and I, uh, I I also say lawnmowers are oh, included okay. there you in go. that. So if kids want to, you know, break the cold and there try to drive their lawnmowers, they can do that too. We got a few, I suppose, uh, some yeah. of those kids in high school that are uh, they got a few lawn or lawn mowing businesses. Yep. Maybe they'll bring theirs. Yep. I think the Sproke boys, I don't know if they're in FFA, but they got a pretty impressive rig. Oh, they, for sure. They do they do my yard every once in a while. Yep. So yep. do and, good work. Uh, you know, it's all about bringing uh, recognition to the yes. local chapter. As uh, I mean, I mean, it's obviously a national thing, but talking about the unique things that you do here um, at Central Lion. Uh, and then also next Thursday, uh, you have one of your contests that we'll be yes. going to. Yes. So um, every year um, at, during National FFA Week is always uh, known to host our uh, sub-district contest is what it's called. Um, and that rotates between all of the uh, Lyon and Sioux County schools. Um, and this year it's, uh, I get to have the privilege of being able to have it here at Central Lyon. And, um, yeah, we'll have close to about 15 contests I'll be running throughout the school that uh, next Thursday afternoon. And, um, you know, it's just a big time for kids to showcase all their hard work and everything that they do in their career development events um, and just, you know, show show the different events and stuff like that that they do within the FFA organization. And now FFA, um, in order to be a member of FFA, you have to be in one of your VOA classes. Yes. Okay, yep. so there is a requirement. Yep. But it, yep. as far as uh, age requirements, anybody in high school can right. par participate. Right. Um, yes. And then obviously it's not just about um, – showing at the fair and right. those sorts of things. Yeah. There's lots yeah. of other things. I mean, that's probably what people mainly yeah. know it for, yes. but it's a lot of other things as well. Yeah, you know, and um, FFA is an organization that really anyone can be a part of. I, I look at statistically of the amount of kids that I have um, that are growing up on the farm or even in acreage, um, and I would say maybe 30% of those kids of my program, and currently we're, at, we're sitting at 70 kids within the high school, um, and 30% of those kids are – on the farm or on the acre on an acreage or directly related to um, agriculture and the rest of the kids you know they just want to get uh, get to be a part of the organization and uh, be a part of it and promote agriculture the way that um, we see fit and um, just try to give them the opportunities that they need to try to hopefully build a future career within agriculture all right so if you uh, you know want to be a part of FFA if you're a central line kid doesn't you don't have to live on a farm no. and especially as you know farms are disappearing a little yeah. bit and you know the trend is to go away from them though the trend is probably to go back to acreages now is yeah. finding them in very big demand but uh yep. you know i got my daughter involved in 4-h which is obviously kind of a feeder program yes. to, to ffa uh she doesn't has never really been on a farm That's even though right. my, my uncle has one my, my grandpa's old farm but uh yep. you know she enjoys that and uh, i'm sure that you've got a lot of kids like that in your For program sure. as well yeah yes well, I want to thank you for taking some time to join me today. And uh, we'll be looking forward to FFA week starting on Tuesday as President's Day, yep. no school. Yep. And uh, hopefully uh, hopefully, I don't have to eat anything too uh, hot or do anything, <laughs> do anything on, for the not Olympics on for next Friday. Nope. Okay. No, not Good. this year. Good. I'll let Mr. Engelman, he usually does that. So yep. he usually tries to pawn it off, but he, he, we'll make him <laughs> do it. So.
<laughs> awesome. Thank you for having me. You're back. We'll be back with uh, some first half highlights after these words from our sponsors. When the world changes, you change with it by embracing new rhythms, redefining connection, and taking less for granted. You push through the uncertainty, and at every point along the way, we stand with you. Because even when your world looks different, our commitment to your care stays the same. Sanford Health. Health lives here. DeNoble Austin and Company PC Certified Public Accountants offers a variety of services including payroll, auditing, sales tax, financial statement preparation, and of course, income taxes. Whether you're a farmer, small or large business owner, or just require some assistance with your personal finances, DeNoble Austin and Company PC can save you time and peace of mind with the skills you need and the service you expect. Located in Rock Rapids and Laverne. Welcome back to Rock Rapids. I want to thank Mr. Josh Rockhill for joining me the other day to sit down and talk about National FFA Week. That is next week. I believe uh, dress up day on Monday, or sorry, Tuesday, no school Monday. Dress up day on Tuesday is country versus country club day. And it's uh, bring your pickup to work, or sorry, to work, to school. And they've got prizes for dirtiest, cleanest, uh, I think best truck and worst truck for National FFA Week on Tuesday. So, what about best conversion van? I, you have to talk to Mr. Rockhill about okay. getting that into a getting that into a category. You'd win all four. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Comet basketball coming out of halftime. What do you think was discussed in the locker room there, Mr. Cruz? Well, probably not to give up layups. No, nope, no, nope. Bergstrom with the layup there. Van Wy, hard dribble pass to Hugedorn off the mark, rebound Potabom. Bergstrom going to go all the way to the basket. Is going to be fouled in the act of dribbling by Hugedorn. Got a shout out to all those. I don't know. Did you give any shout outs while I was gone? No, I didn't. We had some. I didn't. I didn't. We got a whole crew down there watching uh, watching some state oh, wrestling. Yeah. yeah, I saw that text, that picture. I saw. You. Watching some wrestling, so Tana Meyer was gracious to let us know that they're all watching. Looked like from maybe a hotel lobby or something, but watching some CL basketball down in Des Moines. We get a break here. We'll talk a little bit about the wrestlers and the state tournament. 
Kloss to Boer. To Van Wy. Hogedorn on the elbow. Van Wy will take a short jumper and knock it down. Big shot by the senior. Yeah, good to see Reagan Van Wy knock down that uh, 10 to 12 foot jumper. That makes, makes the game a lot easier for the Lions if she can do those sorts of things because it's a lot harder guard for the Comets. Noble dribbles up top. Wobler to Bergstrom. Bergstrom coming out fire in the second half. Shot attempt no good. Another foul here on Hogador and picks up two right out of the half. Yeah, the first minute and 20 seconds. Vesta goes from zero fouls to two fouls. As I believe number 21, Jewel Bergstrom heads the line. Shoots 62% from the line this year. Shout out to Christy Wright for telling us before the game that on varsity bound, her number is three, but in reality, it's 21. Oh. Otherwise, we would have oh. been looking to see who that was. So thank you to Mrs. Wright, always always helping out, keeping us informed with down at the book. There's Van Wy, pass down to Hogedorn. Turnaround jumper's good. Yeah, the comments got caught in a bad switch yep. there. Bergstrom is not gonna guard Desta Hogedorn very often. She's given up about six inches. Baumgars over to Bergstrom. Potterbaum overthrows Noble, and that's going to sail out of bounds. Line basketball as Ashton Kelderman checks in now for the Comets. Schlumbum to Van Wy. Davis top of the key, drives, kicks. Lions being patient here on offense. Schlumbaum. Oh, good cut from Klosbor and pass from Hogedorn. That extends the lead to 12 for the Lions. Yeah, I asked Klosbor saw the lane wide open. Good job of Dessa Hogedorn facing. Addison commits. Another, uh, her third foul, not a very smart foul. Way away from the basket. Brooklyn Kroll will check in for her, so Addison likely to sit for a little while here in the third quarter. Baumgars. Saved by Potabom, that's out of bounds, off the Comets. That was lucky, because that ball was gonna be out of bounds yeah. off of Desta Hooker, and she blocked that shot. That was right in front of us here. That's what I thought. Schlumbum, rebounded by Kroll. Could see what Brooklyn was trying to do there, but too many hands in the way between her and that pass to Davis. But Schlumbum picks it up and drives all the way to the hoop. Left-hand layup is good. Good job there by Afton Schlumbum, who had to sit most of that second quarter. Bergstrom again drives, and she's going to be fouled. Boy, four quick fouls here on the Lions just three minutes into this quarter. That foul is going to go against Kaylee Davis. So team fourth. Davis is first. Daryl and Colleen Small watching us all the way from Texas. Also seeing that uh, Amy Kim watching from Bangladesh again. Not sure what time of the day. Maybe it's tomorrow over there. Could be. I don't know. You weren't a history or a no, geography that's teacher. That's not my, no. Aaron Pass will roll out of bounds off the lines. Turnover. Comet basketball down by 12. 4.45 left here in the third quarter. It still says second period up there on the scoreboard. Ooh, but ooh. Better... Uh, Ron Bogart doesn't make well, many does mistakes. He does not make very many I, I mean, mistakes. I, I'm scared to even go tell him that. Reagan Van Wy rebound off the Potabom miss. Schlumbum. Hugadorn down low. Hard dribble up, no good. Tipped around, rebound Van Wy. Hugadorn will try a longer two pointer and will knock that down. I couldn't tell from this angle if that was a two or a three, but the official right away saying two. 
So Desta stepping out and knocking down some long range jumpers tonight. Now, making that first three pointer on Tuesday, she's, yep. she's now all of a sudden she's hot. Well off the mark there is Ashton Kelderman. Let's say last went off a central line line. Got the Menages tuning in from Sycamore, Illinois, watching tonight. Ah, the reach. The reach. There's no boundaries with this broadcast. You know, when you do a free broadcast, you know, there shouldn't be any boundaries, right? That's right. This is free. Don't forget it. Kelderman to Bergstrom. Bergstrom having a good second half. Noble. Marissa Potabom. Trips on her. Yeah, timeout yeah, call. Yep, timeout. Good, good, heady timeout there by Coach Alexander because that was going to be a turnover. As Potabom kind of got in a hurry and just tripped over her own, own two feet. Remind everyone, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel so you know when we post videos or start our live broadcasts. You do actually have to be subscribed to uh, leave a comment as well. It's uh, a little thing we do to make sure that we don't get uh, any spam in the chat, as tends to happen on YouTube videos. Also, make sure you follow Central Line on Facebook and Twitter to keep up on all the latest news. Talking about Bergstrom, she is the leading scorer now for the Comets with eight points, tied with Wolber. Into Noble for three, three-pointers good. Good out of bounds play there by the Comets. That's the first made three of the game for Boyden Hall, so. Lions looking again at that full court pressure. Do a much better job of getting it across and slowing things down. Schlumbum over to Kroll. Good interior passing there. Wow, good wraparound pass, Van Wydieko. First attempt, no good. Second, though, is better, and that'll fall for Ashlyn Yako. 42-29, 13-point lead for the Lions. Under three left in the third quarter. Yeah, Yako and Van Wy, two seniors, play a lot of basketball together over the years. We're going to get a third foul here on Schlumbum. I think we are. Again, both Schlumbum and Klostebor. Two of the premier ball handlers for the Lions. Going to be going to be taking seats now for a while with three personal fouls. And Van Wye is going to take a seat as Jansma checks in. So out there right now is Jansma, Kroll, Yako, Hugedorn, and Davis. And for the comments, Bergstrom, Baumgars, Potabom, Ashton, Kelderman, and Noble. Baumgars over to Potabom. Good tip there by Brooklyn Crawl. Also a good job there by uh, the Lions on that last picket fence play to get fight through the uh, double the double screen at the top of the key to not give anything easy. Oh, and we got to step over the line. Boy, I had to hold Mr. Cruz back. I thought he was going to jump off the broadcast booth here. With that. Didn't know if the official saw that at first glance. Yeah, it's one of those things the officials even you catch you off guard as an official because that's not something you see very often. Stepping over the out-of-bounds line. That is a violation and a turnover. Lions have it, working it around the perimeter. Good pass into Yakel, two-pointer just off the mark. Big rebound by Hugedorn. 360 layup is good. Yeah, good job there by Desta Hugedorn. Get that rebound, put it right back up. Nice to see the Lions maintaining this lead, if not extending it with their three kind of prominent offensive players, at least ball handlers, on the bench. That was a great job by Marissa Potomom to use her body to get position there. We're going to have a push here on Baumgars, number 11. Shout out to Lenny Ditsworth and family. Lenny is a seventh grade English teacher for Central Lion. Also does some quiz bowl for us and some speech. So Lenny's watching from home with family. Matt and Don Bohr watching from home as well. Big Lions supporters. Brooklyn Kroll, top of the key, over to Van Wy. Good pass. Kroll to Jansma off the mark, but there's Hugedorn again. See that on the replay? 
Kroll gets it down to Jansma, unable to get it, but crashing the boards hard. That's the Hoogenhorn. Potterbaum picks up her second foul. Hoogenhorn in and out on that free throw attempt, so just two on that possession for Desta. It's having a very nice ball game. Bergstrom working on Hoogenhorn, or sorry, that's Potterbaum. No good, there's a rebound to Kroll. Kroll to Jansma. Kaylee Davis, long three-pointer. No good. Bergstrom blocked by Davis. Off Nate Baruch, out of bounds. Great job by Kaylee Davis off her own miss to get back and get in position to make that block. Davis is only 5'5". Doesn't have a whole lot of blocks on the year. Tip from behind by Baumgar, stolen by Bergstrom. Here's the three on one. No easy basket, but there's Riley Kelderman for three, the second three made by the Comets here in the second half in the game. Yeah. They were 0 for 7. Now 2 for 2. We got 35 seconds left here in the third quarter. Near steal again by Baumgars. Good wraparound pass. Van Wyde, Hogadorn. That's been working all evening long. Yeah, really good job there by Reagan to find Hogadorn. Unofficially, Desta now has 14 points, leading all scores on the court. Potabom down low is going to get called. We're going to get a foul call. I think that's going to go against Reagan Van Wyde. Reagan needs to be maybe a half step yep. quicker to the backside there. Dessa also needs to pick a side. Is making, she's kind of making it hard for her weak side defenders to help her as they're not really sure if she's going to take that back down the, the underneath or if she's going to stay top side. Potabom knocks it down. Bergstrom will take a seat as one of the Keldermans checks in. Van Wy, another seat for her. She's got two fouls. That's a, team, that's a 16 foul on yeah. the line, something to make note of. And Ariana Newcaster back in. Noon Kester will take it out. More pressure being applied by the Comets. Good pass. Kroll to Jansma. Basket good. What a play. What ball movement by the Lions. Yeah, that was really good ball movement. Good job breaking the press quite easily and then just keep attacking and keep attacking smartly. Dion Jansma from the line, daughter of Dr. Dale Jansma. Makes the free throw. And out of bounds. Another costly turnover for the comments. But we got two seconds left. See, the Lions are just going to dribble this one out. They're going to try a desperation heave, and they will run it out. Great quarter there, 21. <laughs> Great quarter there, 21 points for the Lions as they outscore the Boyden Hall Comets 21 to 16 to extend the lead to 15. We'll be back with the start of the fourth quarter here on the CL Broadcast Network. After a long day, deciding on dinner can be tough, but a few simple words can make everything better. Pizza's here. End your day the right way with pizza and chicken from the carryout and delivery experts at your local pizza ranch. Mm -hmm. At Frontier Bank, we know you're busy with what really matters. That's why our Big Deal Checking account was created to make banking work for you. While you're keeping up with life's daily transactions, your Big Deal Checking account is earning you monthly rewards. Competitive rates, refunds on ATM fees, and more with no minimum balance or monthly service fees required and you can apply for a big deal account from anywhere in less than 10 minutes focus on what matters most bank with frontier bank see a customer service representative for more information member fdic ball intercepted by bergstrom coming out of the quarter break and she'll take it all the way to the basket tipped around Baumgars to ashton kelderman Bergstrom for three, knocks it down. Shortens the lead to 12 for the Lions. Klaus Sabor and Schlumbum back in with three personal fouls apiece. And we got a 
Looks like we got a carry violation, but I'm not really not sure, sure how that's a carry because the ball was obviously tipped. tipped by the defender. But either way. That's why we broadcast and they officiate, yep. I guess. Yep. Nobody gets everything perfect. Uh, just listen to us for a few minutes. <laughs> they only got one quarter left to listen to us, that's Mr. true, Cruz I know. Season. And then you got to take a whole year yeah, off. Ashton Kelderman gives us. It's the off season where we're going to get our work in. Yeah. Coach Grayfin will call a timeout. 30 second. We'll take it with them. You're watching Lions Basketball here on the CL Broadcast Network. Back here in Rock Rapids. 5-0 run for the Comets to start this quarter. Lions will take a timeout. Try and stem the momentum here a little bit. All right, folks, you got 7-12 left to, give, to get your shout out before the season is over here from the Central Lion Broadcast Network standpoint. Davis down low, has it tipped away and stolen by Potabom. Kelderman, top of the key. She's going to drive left and lay it. Nope, we're going to have a foul on the ground on number 24, Davis. One and one, so we're already in the bonus here. It's just a 10-point lead. It's... Was yeah. high as what, 16, maybe 17, ah, maybe 16. Six, yeah, 15 or 16, I think, has been the biggest lead. Down to 10. Kelderman makes the free throw, cuts it into single digits. Lions cannot get complacent here late. Second free throw by Kelderman is also good. Davis over to Klosterbor. Three pointer is up and. Off the rim, no good. Tipped around. There's Potabom. Loses control. Slumbum with the steal. Stolen again by Potabom. Bergstrom driving right. Good help defense by Klostevor. Noble for three. Off the mark, long rebound, and there's Van Wy. Strong rebound by the senior. Looking ahead, Klossabor to Hogadorn. Layup is good. That'll bump it back to double digits. That's what the Lions needed yep. as the Comets had scored seven straight there. Good defense by the Lions leads to an easy bucket. Bergstrom for three. Off the rim, no good. Another rebound, Hogadorn. Slowing it up is Klostebor. Davis to Schlumbum. And there's Addison, top of the key again. No shot clock in today's Not this year. basketball. Next time, next game we do, there will be a shot clock. Both boys and girls. Associations approving that for the 22-23 season. Down low. Ooh. I think Kelderman will be, should be okay with that foul call because Hogadorn had a wide open layup. That's going to be the let's, the second on Kelderman. Just a 14 foul of the comments as Noble will take a seat. I think it was Wobler who checked back in. The Allens also watching from home. Bill, Sandra, and the boys. Slumbum all the way to the hoop scoop shot. A little long, no good. Rebound. Good pass. Van Wy to Hogadorn. That's that's been quite the connection this evening. Yeah, I think the Lions I don't want to make it sound like they're trying to stall out here, but they are. They need to just run their offense. Uh, they're doing just fine. They want to run, they don't want to take bad shots and they want to run some clock if they can, but 
they had built a 16-point lead. They can, they can get this back up there just by playing good defense and running the regular offense. Bergstrom to Wobler. Potterbaum receives it down low. Turn around, no good. Rebound, Wobler. Block. And Hugedorn. Oh! Ooh. It's going to be tipped off Black, off the official, and now it's Central Line basketball. That's an inadvertent whistle. They're going to call it. He, Coach Alexander is right. The official should never, you don't blow your whistle if it hits you. You are part of the, in, you are part of the court. They might go to a jump ball here, and then it's going to be Boyne Hill basketball. Even though the Lions were going to grab it. They were yep. right in front yep. of them. So it was either going to be off, but rules are rules. Rules are rules. So are they what they're it? saying, I think if I'm reading the official's lips, he's saying that that was going to be tipped out on the line. That is 100% wrong. That was tipped out by Boyden Hall. So they did not go to the jump ball, but the ball never lies. It does not lie. Oh, it's, well, it's lying on the ground right now and picked up. Now there's the jump ball that we've been waiting wow. for this whole time. So we got the jump ball. Got the we jump ball eventually, for. yes. Bomb guards with the basketball were just nearing the four-minute mark left in this one. Wobler all the way to the basket. No good, but another foul here is going to go against Schlumbaum. That's going to be her fourth. Eighth team foul. I think this is a two-shot foul, though. It was on the shot. Free throw is good by Wobler. And Klosper will check in for Schlumbaum. Wobler hits the second, two of two. Ten point lead for the Lions. More pressure being applied by the Comets. Van Wye is going to take it slow, getting across half court. She's actually going to go all the way to the basket, but comes up short on the layup attempt. Rebound Wobler. Somebody get back. And that's why you stick with it as Reagan Van Wye comes away with it. And we got, it looks like it's tipped. <laughs> There's about one person in this gym that thinks that ball was tipped, and that was the official. <laughs> I think uh, the rest of the crowd on both sides thought that might have been a foul. Yeah. But That's all, all right. we can do is broadcast. Here comes Kroll. Lions looking for some more offense. Don't want to uh, take their foot off the gas at this point. Coach Alexander calling for almost the intentional foul, yeah. wanting to get his, wanting to maybe get here in the bonus, not let as much time roll off the clock. A couple more shout outs. Uh, someone watching from Denver, Colorado. Myron and Penny Kroll watching. Meredith Vaynerzy watching. So I uh, got a text from uh, Adam Bombers. Vogel watching from home. Want to give a, she wants to give a shout out to Dr. Dale Jansma as well. Doctor of English and Math at the fifth grade level. It's almost a requirement now for fifth grade, isn't it? Klaus DeBoer. Boy, if I was Addison Klaus DeBoer, I don't know if, yeah. or I don't think I'd give the ball up. No. She's obviously can, can dribble and get, get off pressure, yep. and she's probably she's our, the best free throw yep. shooter. She is, I would say with the attempts, going into consideration with the amount of attempts she's had, 75%. Now Brooklyn Kroll going to the line. The senior shoots it at 60% on the year. This might be a free throw challenge here to end this ball game. Kroll hits the first. Nice shot by the lefty. Wobler, Kelderman, Baumgars into Bergstrom. Bergstrom drives right, finds an open Potabom middle of the lane, two-pointer up and good. 
See if the Comets will continue to foul here as Klossbo will bring the clock across the timeline. Gives it up to Van Wy. And grabbed there by Potabom. Eighth team foul, so it's still one and one opportunity here. Van Wy will go to the line. She shoots it at 66%. Off the mark, but rebounded by Kroll. Big rebound. And nice, fi nice find. Cross the board to Van Wy. Left hand layup. Good. See the replay here. Good find by Addison Cross the board. And that is the fourth foul on Potabom. So she's going to sit. Obviously not going to sit for long. No. Look for Coach Alexander maybe to go offensive, defensive substitutions as much as he can here in the last uh, under three minutes. They do have three timeouts left. So Van Wy back to the line. Misses again. Almost in the same spot that ball ricocheted to. Yeah. Thought we are going to have a repeat there. Bergstrom, two-pointer good. Timeout here by Coach Alexander in the Comets. We'll take it with them. You're watching Lions Basketball here on the CL Broadcast Network. When the world changes, you change with it. By embracing new rhythms, redefining connection, and taking less for granted, you push through the uncertainty. And at every point along the way, we stand with you. Because even when your world looks different, our commitment to your care stays the same. Sanford Health. Health lives here. Here's to welcoming moments, big and small. At Avera, our nationally recognized health system will be right here with you, with care and coverage. Partner with Avera for more hellos, more hugs, more memories. We'll move you forward through sickness and health and every milestone in between. Hello, possibility. Hello Healthy, Hello Life. Avera, moving health forward. As we wind things down here, I want to give one last shout out to our student helpers, Liam Vanerzy, Leo Grone, Adrian Bonchi, Jason Heiser, and Bo Mayo. We're missing Levi Cooperschmidt tonight, the assistant to the regional producer, but he has done an excellent job for us all year, so thank you to these students for helping us. Foul there against Baumgard. It's going to send Aston Klostabor to the line for... Two foul shots. We are now in the double bonus. Said earlier, Klossabor probably the line that Coach Grafen would like at the free throw line, shooting at 75% this year. Very confident stroke from the charity stripe as she knocks down the first. Avery Noble checking in. Got a shout out from a former a CL grad, JT. Jason Thedens watching all the way from Canton. You're seeing JT here in a couple months at the racetrack. He's our pit steward down there. Wobler being defended closely by Davis. Noble all the way to the basket. Left hand shot, no good. Tipped around. There's Klossabor up ahead to Van Wy. Up and under move. Good. Layup. Another layup for Van Wy. Unofficially, she now has 11 points. Another well-rounded performance tonight from Reagan Van Wy. Bergstrom from three off the mark. Rebound Kelderman. Down low to Wobler. And Klossabor will clear. That foul called on Ellie Wolber, her, just her first, but again, Lions in double bonus. Klossabor sinks the first. Second one also good for Addison. It's now a 15 point lead in favor of the Lions. Kelderman to Kelderman. 
Riley Kelderman for three, no good. Rebound to Davis. See if that will, nope. Nope, they're gonna continue to foul. Kloss, or oh, they're gonna try. Foul there on Wobler. Send Addison Kloss for back to the free throw line. Likely to go into double digits here is Addison in the point column. Yeah, be the Unofficially, everything's unofficial. 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 Be the third. There it is, third lion in double figures tonight. Once again, the winner of this game will play the winner of Ridgeview and West Monona. And we were notified earlier today that that game will be played at Kingsley Pearson High School. Yeah, I had the same exact look on my face, Mr. Engelman, when I heard that. I'm not really sure why you play a regional final in a gym that's half the size of this gym. Not that we deserve to have it either, but. Kelderman, has the state called about our broadcasting unit? Do you know, they need us or anything? They might. Okay. They might. I, I, you know, I got a coach's clinic, though, for the championship game, so I, I, I'm, I'm booked. That'll, looks like that'll it do it. Like, yeah, looks like time may expire here. There's 50 seconds left, but Coach Alexander's you know, this is, told the girls to kind of back up a little bit, and looks like Addison may dribble it out here. Uh, this is a, a scary game. When, <laughs> I thought the official was going to give him a timeout. I thought he was too. <laughs> Dessa Hugedorn is going to go to the free throw line now for a double bonus because now we got a few substitutions as Coach Alexander will empty his bench. We'll try to get the names of these individuals. They come in. Some went in already, and some are waiting at the scores table. <laughs> number 53 went in, Hannah Moret, the senior. Uh, number 13, not on the Reagan Damstra. Number 41, Sydney Buenelas. Let's see who else is out there. 45 is out there. That's Riley Kelderman. She's been out there for a while. 53, Hannah Mort. 25, Noble checking back in. And that should that gives the comment six. Oh, now they're back to five. Riley Weiler, Kaylee Floyd, Desta Hugadorn's your shooter, Mariah Gerlman, and Ashlyn Davis now out there for the team in white. Hugadorn will get a well-deserved round of applause as she checks out. Ashlyn Murray will check in. These Lions fans are excited. They will be, we will be moving on here to the next round. Long three-pointer, no good, rebound. Nope, we're gonna have a jump ball. Dave and Roxanne Ackerman may get the last shot out of the night. Very timely on Mr. Ackerman's part. Oh, I got one more, uh -oh, Sandra nope. Hydrator. Oh just boy, who's gonna the, get the last the, one? In the chat box, last one. Like I said though, this is a scary game. You play a, a Boyden Hall team for the third time of the year, even if you, uh, Alexis Austin lets that one go <laughs> through her hands. Even if you get the first two victories, always, a, always kind of a scary thing when you get to this point in the season. you got to play someone you've already seen twice. So a good victory here by the Lions. Ball tipped out of bounds by Floyd. Comet ball, 11 seconds before Once again, this one is over. Don't forget, Tuesday, Lions versus Hinton. Boys Basketball District Final at MOC Floyd Valley. Get your tickets, IAHSAA.org slash tickets. Gurleman over to Austin, and that'll do it. From Rock Rapids, Central Lion coming out victorious, a 19-point victory over the Boyden Hall Comets. So Central Lion improves to 21-2 and two overall. Comets fall to 12-11. and 11. Once again, Lions will play next Wednesday versus the winner of Ridgeview and West Monona. We believe that will be in, in Kingsley Pearson. Um, we will, please pay attention to the website, uh, our social media. We will get the, the information about tickets and how to purchase tickets as the Girls Association does not have one hub like the Boys Association. But we will get that out there for you as soon as we get it from uh, whoever the host site is. Uh, we want to thank everyone for that helped us all year. Mr. Engelman for helping me with the play-by-play. Leo Grone and Liam Vanderzee for doing stats for us and also the people here in the stands. Adrian Bonchi for running the video board. Jason Heiser, Levi Cooperschmidt, and Bo Mayo for running our production. For the last time for this 21-22 uh, basketball season, signing off. We'll see you next time, everyone.